Welcome to the Society of Thoracic Surgeons University course. In this course, you will be able to view samples of VATS, right upper lobectomy, right middle lobectomy, right lower lobectomy, left upper lobectomy, and left lower lobectomy. We will also provide you with instructions and videos for mediastinal lymph node staging, endobronchial ultrasound, as well as transitioning techniques, complications, treating patients with evaluation of the current literature, and a lecture on outcomes. I hope you enjoy the course. The following lecture will include anatomic illustrations of the different lobectomies with a thoracoscopic approach. The first image shows the typical approach for any right-sided lung resection. A VATS right upper lobe, right middle lobe, and right lower lobe can be performed through this approach typically making one port in the anterior axillary line in the fourth to fifth intercostal space, which is approximately three centimeters in length and is the utility port, an additional one centimeter posterior port in the posterior axillary line in the seventh to eighth intercostal space, and then an optional port, which can be created in the anterior axillary line in the sixth to seventh intercostal space. The three ports that are illustrated in this technique, again, can be used for any right-sided thoracoscopic lung resection. The illustration now shows any left-sided port anatomy structure for approaching a thoracoscopic left upper lobectomy or left lower lobectomy or segmentectomy. The utility port now is located on the left anterior axillary line but is slightly rotated a little bit more posteriorly than the illustration on the right to avoid the pericardium. This illustration shows that it's a four centimeter incision. It can be anywhere from three to five centimeters depending on your need. The anterior axillary line marks the location of that port. A posterior axillary line, one centimeter port in the seventh intercostal space is used as the camera port. And an additional optional port can be placed in the anterior axillary line inferior to the utility port. Prior to beginning any right-sided lung resection, you will want to begin by performing a mediastinal lymph node dissection. After the mediastinal lymph node dissection has been performed, you will then want to retract the lung anteriorly, providing a posterior exposure of the pleural surface. You can begin by incising the pleura along the pathway of the azagous vein, taking care not to damage the vagus nerve running longitudinally next to the esophagus. You can take down the inferior pulmonary ligament, although this is not always necessary when performing a right upper lobectomy. By performing the posterior dissection first, it enables you to then flip the lung posteriorly and perform an anterior to posterior approach as you go towards the hilum and begin to divide structures. Once the posterior aspect of the lung has been dissected, you then have no more posterior work to do. When performing a video-assisted thoracoscopic right upper lobectomy, after the posterior pleural dissection has been performed and after a mediastinal lymph node dissection has been performed, you then approach the anterior hilum of the lung. Dissecting the pleural surface and dividing the pleural surface exposes the superior branches of the superior pulmonary vein. Be careful to dissect the pulmonary vein branches going to the right middle lobe and preserve them and only divide those branches of the pulmonary vein going to the right upper lobe. This dissection can be performed with an endokitner, a peanut, a tonsil sponge attached to a sponge stick, or with blunt or sharp dissection. Whatever technique you provide will allow you to encircle the upper lobe branches of the pulmonary vein, a passer may be used to facilitate passage of a stapler, and once the stapler is safely passed completely around those branches with the cut mark on the stapler past the superior aspect of the pulmonary vein, you can then staple and divide the upper lobe branches of the right superior pulmonary vein. For a video-assisted thoracoscopic right upper lobectomy, the second structure that's divided is the truncus anterior branch of the right upper lobe pulmonary artery. Once the pulmonary vein branches to the right upper lobe have been divided, this is the next vascular structure that you should encounter. The truncus anterior branch of the pulmonary artery should be dissected free and separate from the basilar branch of the pulmonary artery. Be sure that you are only encircling the truncus anterior branches of the main pulmonary artery 
and not the main pulmonary artery, which would require a pneumonectomy. When you're dissecting the truncus anterior branches of the superior right upper lobe for a right upper lobectomy, this branch, these branches may bifurcate early or late. You dissect around the vessels, opening up the entry point and the exit point, and then eventually passing the stapler around this structure and completely stapling and dividing the truncus anterior of the pulmonary artery. Once the truncus anterior branch of the pulmonary artery has been divided, the next structure that is encountered is either the right upper lobe bronchus or the posterior ascending pulmonary artery. These structures are typically right next to each other. By encircling, stapling, and dividing, the next structure that is easily passed around may allow you to either divide the right upper lobe bronchus or the posterior ascending pulmonary artery. We do not recommend that one be divided in front of the other, but instead recommend that you see which one has the most reasonable angle. And based on that decision, you can then divide either the right upper lobe bronchus or the right upper lobe branch of the posterior ascending pulmonary artery. Once the bronchus has been divided, you can then encircle, staple, and divide the posterior ascending branch of the pulmonary artery. Now you have divided all of your hilar structures going up to the right upper lobe, the bronchus, the artery, and the vein. And now that these have all completely been divided, all that remains is the fissure. The fissure is stapled from the utility port beginning anteriorly towards the posterior area and angling upwards to preserve the superior segment of the right lower lobe. Once the fissure has been divided, the specimen is placed into an endocatch bag and is removed through the utility port. For a thoracoscopic right middle lobectomy, the approach is slightly different than that for a right upper lobe or right lower lobe. The structures are similar from the back and you should perform the posterior dissection of the pleura first. Once that has been performed, you can then begin to approach from the anterior aspect of the hilum. By dividing the pleura, taking care to preserve the phrenic nerve, you then can encircle and dissect the pulmonary vein. Make sure that you do not have a common vein and make sure that you have only the superior pulmonary vein. Once you've dissected the superior pulmonary vein, make sure that you're only encircling, stapling, and dividing the right middle lobe branches of the pulmonary vein, specifically preserving those branches going to the right upper lobe. Once this structure has been encircled, you may then pass this passer behind the pulmonary vein branches to the right middle lobe or just pass the stapler around those venous branches and divide the vein. Once the pulmonary vein branches have been divided, you then should encounter the bronchus that goes to the right middle lobe. This structure is then encircled, stapled, and divided using a bronchial staple load, which would either be with Covidian, a purple load, or with Ethicon, a blue load or a green load, typically a blue load. Once the right middle lobe bronchial branches have been encircled, stapled, and divided, it will then be easier for you to see the pulmonary artery branches coming off of the basilar branch of the pulmonary artery and going up to the right middle lobe. Once you've completed the division of the right middle lobe bronchial branches, you will then be able to encounter the branches of the right middle lobe from the pulmonary artery going into the right middle lobe. It is important to note that this is exactly opposite of the superior segment right lower lobe branch on the opposite side of the pulmonary artery. Once the bronchus has been divided, you can encircle, staple, and divide the right middle lobe pulmonary artery. Once that vessel branch has been divided, all you have to do is to dissect the fissure and staple and divide the fissure, completing a right middle lobectomy. Once the right middle lobectomy has been performed, you can place the right middle lobe into an endocatch bag and remove it through the utility port. When performing a video-assisted thoracoscopic right lower lobectomy, again, it is important to begin with a posterior pleural dissection and then with an anterior pleural dissection. Once the pleura has been dissected and the hilar structures have been identified, and you are sure that there is no common pulmonary vein, you can then retract the lung superiorly and begin by dissecting, encircling, stapling, and dividing the right lower lobe pulmonary vein. This will be the first structure that you encounter as you take down the inferior pulmonary ligament and take the inferior pulmonary ligament lymph nodes. Once the structure has been encircled, stapled, and divided, 
Just behind it, you will begin to see the bronchus. After dividing the pulmonary vein, the lung is continuously retracted superiorly. The pulmonary vein is now retracted superiorly as well, and the right lower lobe bronchial branches are exposed. Be sure when encircling the bronchus to the right lower lobe, you do not include the right middle lobe branches, and make sure that you are including the superior segmental branches. Occasionally, it may be possible to encircle, staple, and divide the right lower lobe bronchus, leaving the superior segmental branch and taking that at a later time. But typically, it is possible to angle the stapler slightly oblique so that you avoid stapling and dividing or narrowing the right middle lobe bronchus and you include the superior segment right lower lobe bronchus. When passing the stapler, an insufflation test is recommended to ensure that you have not inadvertently narrowed any passages. When passing the stapler behind the bronchus, always be aware that the pulmonary artery is just on the other side of the bronchus. Beware not to pass with too much force as you could potentially injure the underlying pulmonary artery. Once the bronchial branches have been stapled and divided, you then can identify the right lower lobe branches of the pulmonary artery. Again, it's important to make sure that your stapler includes the superior segment right lower lobe branches of the pulmonary artery and avoids the posterior ascending branches of the pulmonary artery and avoids the right middle lobe branches of the pulmonary artery. Again, passing a passer behind the pulmonary artery branches and using it to lead the stapler is always possible if you are concerned about passing the stapler. By dissecting the entry point and the exit point and using blunt dissection with a tonsil sponge, you may find that this dissection is easier. Sometimes it is impossible to dissect the right lower lobe bronchus without feeling like you may be injuring the pulmonary artery. In cases where there is too much scar tissue or a lymph node is adherent, or in a situation where you would like to gain proximal control of the pulmonary artery, we recommend going into the fissure and dissecting out the pulmonary artery. By identifying the major fissure, which separates the right lower lobe from the right upper lobe and right middle lobe, you can see the basilar branches of the pulmonary artery. Those basilar branches are easily dissected, encircled, stapled, and divided, and this approach is a safe approach to ensure that you will not narrow or limit the blood supply to the right middle lobe. Once you've divided the pulmonary artery going to the right lower lobe and all of its associated branches, you can then begin to dissect out the right middle lobe branch and the right lower lobe branch. Be sure that you do not encircle, staple, and divide the right middle lobe branch and be sure that you only encircle, staple, and divide the right lower lobe bronchial branches going to the right lower lobe, including the superior segmental branches. This can be performed from a fissure approach or by retracting the lung upwards again and from an inferior approach. When performing a video-assisted thoracoscopic left upper lobectomy, you use the same technique as the illustrated port approach and also perform the posterior pleural dissection first. Once the posterior pleural dissection has been performed, you can then retract the lung posteriorly, approaching the lung from the front to the back as you divide the hilar structures. You first begin by dissecting the superior and inferior pulmonary vein structures. You want to divide only the left upper lobe superior pulmonary vein structures. Make sure that you have an inferior pulmonary vein and that you are not ligating both branches. The second structure to be divided in a left upper lobectomy is the pulmonary artery branch. You may encounter several posterior, anterior, and apical pulmonary artery branches. The first branch of the pulmonary artery that you encounter is typically easily encircled, stapled, and divided. You may find that you have to retract the left upper lobe pulmonary vein branches a little more posteriorly to be able to expose the second branch coming off of the pulmonary artery. Typically, one to two branches are easily taken, encircled, stapled, and divided before you are able to easily identify the left upper lobe bronchial branches which will bifurcate 
into the apico-posterior segments and the lingular segment. Once you have taken the majority of the anterior and apical pulmonary artery branches, and once you have stapled the pulmonary vein, you will then encircle, staple, and divide the left upper lobe bronchus. Typically, this is encircled, stapled, and divided prior to exposing any of the remaining pulmonary arteries. Occasionally, approaching the left upper lobe bronchus is facilitated by also taking the lingular pulmonary artery branch. In that case, we recommend stapling a bit of the fissure, disconnecting the left upper lobe from the left lower lobe, identifying, encircling, stapling, and dividing the pulmonary artery branch to the lingula. Once this has been performed, the passage of the stapler around the left upper lobe bronchus is often easier to navigate. Once you have stapled and divided the bronchus, you will then find several small pulmonary artery branches which range in number that are remaining behind the bronchus coming from the pulmonary artery and going up to the remaining left upper lobe. Those are merely dissected, encircled, stapled, and divided, leaving nothing left holding the lung but the fissure. Since you started with a posterior approach and did the posterior dissection, extending it apically inferior to the aorta, taking care to preserve the phrenic nerve and the recurrent laryngeal nerve and performing a mediastinal lymph node dissection, all you have left now to perform is the fissure division. The fissure can be divided from an anterior approach through the utility incision and is stapled and divided. The left upper lobe is placed into an endocatch bag and is removed through the utility port. When approaching the left lower lobe, a similar technique can be used as that approach described for the right lower lobe. Again, dissecting the pleura anteriorly and posteriorly will facilitate dissection of the vessels going to the left lower lobe. Once you've completed your mediastinal lymph node dissection and once you've divided the pleura, you then begin to take down the inferior pulmonary ligament. Once this has been divided and those lymph nodes have been collected and sent for pathologic evaluation, you can ascend up the inferior pulmonary ligament. You will then encounter the inferior pulmonary vein. That structure should then be encircled, stapled, and divided with a vascular stapler. Once you've divided the inferior branch of the pulmonary vein going to the left lower lobe, you then will encircle, staple, and divide the bronchial branches going to the left lower lobe. Those branches are easily encircled, stapled, and divided. However, you must again take caution when passing the stapler around this bronchus as the pulmonary artery lies just on the other side. If again you are concerned about this dissection and want to ensure that you are not getting into the pulmonary artery, you can also take a fissure approach. However, the bottom to top approach is the most recommended approach. Again, you still have to divide the pulmonary artery and the fissure, but by dividing the bronchus, you will then expose the fissure and the pulmonary artery, which is the only structure left. Once you've divided the bronchial branches to the left lower lobe, all that is left to divide is the pulmonary artery branches to the left lower lobe. Ensure that you are encircling, stapling, and dividing those branches going to the superior segment and the basilar segments of the left lower lobe. And make sure that you are preserving the lingular artery going to the lingula of the left upper lobe. Once you have stapled and divided these structures, dissecting the entry point, the exit point, and using blunt dissection to confirm that you are completely around the pulmonary artery, you can either use a leader device or simply pass the stapler around the pulmonary artery branches and staple and divide them. Once you've completed this, all that is left or remaining is the fissure, and this can be stapled by passing a large purple load or green load endoscopic stapler from the utility port in an anterior to posterior fissure division using lung clamps to retract the lung and expose the fissure. A clamp is placed on the bronchus as the fissure is stapled. We would like to thank the Society of Thoracic Surgeons for providing the instructors the opportunity to teach video-assisted thoracoscopic lobectomy. If you have any questions, feel free to contact any of the instructors as we remain available and happy to help you as you transition from open lobectomy to minimally invasive thoracoscopic lobectomy. A CME portion will be attached to this lecture in the event that you have questions. Feel free to begin your transition 
by dissecting from the front to the back in open cases and then slowly, gradually decreasing the size of your incisions and making your incision anterior rather than posterior. We wish you luck in your adventure to begin video-assisted thoracoscopic lobectomy as you aim to improve the care of your patients.